Hi everyone, it's the Math Lady here, and today we're talking a little bit more about slope. I've done a couple of videos on slope, on the slope-intercept form of a line, on positive, negative, zero, undefined slopes, and I'm going to put links to those in the description below. But this is a little bit different on slope, and this is change in y over change in x. This is something we see a lot as being a, uh, excuse me, another way of referring to slope. I've referred to it in previous videos, and you'll see it referred to this as rise over run. How much up or down it's going, rising, over how much the line is going left or right, or running. Like I always say, like you're rising in an airplane or like a balloon or something, you're going up or down. And if I'm running, I am going left to right. I am not generally running up into the air. Would that it were so simple, but no, I am not going to be doing that. Okay, anyways, so <laughs> don't know where that came from. Change in Y over change in X. You will see this represented like this. Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. And like many things, when we throw extra variables and unusual notations to those variables, it can be a bit daunting. It can look a little like intimidating. Like, what is this? This thing that was pretty simple of just saying, I'm counting up and then over on a line, you're making it look way different. It's the same thing. It's just being presented differently. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit here. Put that over. Ah, if it... <laughs> Come on, whiteboard, behave. Okay, <laughs> it may look a little bit different, but it's doing the same thing. And we're going to show why that is. And then we're gonna show how we can use this. So I'm gonna try to line that up pretty closely with our, our grid there in the background. Um, as a reminder, it would help if I was in pin mode and not eraser mode, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. This is x, y, this is our positive, negative, positive, and negative, positive, there we go, y. Okay, so let's say I have a line and it goes through like this, okay? So there's my line. And I'm trying to I didn't quite get it. It's kind of hard to get it with this, but I'm showing these two points that it went through. And I am using the grid that's in the background, and it's just a one-to-one -one that I'm using. I'm not doing any funky kind of scale stuff where each of these lines represents five or something. Nope. Just very straightforward. Okay. So the two points that I have here, the first point is zero three, and my second point is one, five. Okay, zero, three, and one, five. Now, if I was using the rise over run, just counting them out method that I showed you in um, some of those earlier videos that I linked below. Sorry, I'm trying to stifle. I get hiccups a lot when I'm talking <laughs> for these videos. It's like I'm, because you're breathing through your mouth. Anyway, you don't care about that, do you? No, you don't. Let's get back to why you're here, the math. So if I'm counting out, I will go, all right, I'm rising two. There's my two. I'm rising two, and I'm going towards the positive. That's a positive two. And then I'm running to the right towards the positive one. Two over one or two. My slope is two. And that's the right answer. It is. If this line has a slope of two. Well, let's try our new little formula over here that shows the change in y or the ch over the change in x. Well, this is just another way of saying rise over run because when I'm counting up, I'm saying to get from this point to this point, how much did my y value change? I went up two on the y-axis. And when I'm counting over, from 
the x of this point to the x of that point, I'm saying how much did the x change? It went 1 to the right towards the positive there. So to plug our numbers in to this equation, this is our first dot, our first, dot, our first point, <laughs> our first dot. It's our first point. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, it's, I'm getting a bit punchy. It's Friday. It's late. It's Friday. I'm allowed to be a little punchy. Okay, so this first one, it's x coordinates, x and y. And as this is our first point, I'm calling it x1 and y1. This is our second point, x and y. And just to differentiate that x and y, call it x2 and y2. It's the second x and y. That's all those little numbers mean. The first pair of x and y coordinates and the second pair of x and y coordinates. So let's plug those in to our equation over here. y2, the y from the second point is 5, minus y1, the y from the first point, over x2, the x from the second point, which is 1, minus x1, the x from the first point, 0. What's 5 minus 3? 2. What's 1 minus 0? 1. Lo and behold, we have a match. It is again 2 over 1 or 2. Same exact answer. Now, you might ask, well, what's the point? I can just look at the graph and count it. Why do I have to say, oh, this is x1, that's y1, this is x2, that's y2? That's just a lot of extra work. Well, what if you don't have a graph? What if that's not available to you? And there will be problems like this on uh, tests that they will just give you the points. And it's good to know how to do this. There are applications and there are times when you will need to do this without looking at a graph. So if I am say, if I am told that there is a line and it goes through the points 5, 7, and negative 3, 10. What is the slope of that line? Well, two things. One, especially if I'm doing this on a test and I'm trying to go through the questions in a timely manner so I don't run out of time and lose points, I'm probably not going to have enough time to draw a very you know, accurate to scale graph for all of my questions that I have. Also, these are pretty far apart. So if I'm just doing a little quick, you know, this is not to scale, five, seven is going to be around here and then negative three, 10. Oh my goodness. That's way down here, down in this area. That's a long way. And if I'm relegating myself to just like counting, counting, counting without doing any math, <sighs> Well, first off, it's going to take a lot of time. And second, it's easy to make a mistake. And this is something because there is this nice and easy formula that we can use. We don't have to worry about that. We don't have to worry about making a mistake. So let's plug these in. And you might look at these and go, oh, which one's the first pair? Which one's the second pair? What if this, is this Y2? Is this X1, X2? I mean, X, sorry, X1, Y1. And is this X2, Y2, or is the other way around? I'll let you in on a secret. It doesn't matter at all. It doesn't matter. And I'll show you why. You will get the same answer no matter which one you use. My one little caveat on this is that if your teacher or professor has clearly labeled as saying, this is the first point, this is the second point, and they want you to show your work, they are most likely looking for you to put the second point in for the x2, y2, and the first given point for x1, y1. So I would never tell you to do something that would lose you points on a test. Golden rule is if your teacher told you to show your work and he or she wants you to do it in a specific way, do it that way. That's, that's just all there is to it. 
um, they're the ones giving you the grade, please follow the way that they tell you to do it. So if the method I'm showing you is a little bit different, please defer to theirs and use theirs when you're on that test. All right, so let's try, say this is our first point and this is our second, and I'm gonna do it both ways just so you see how you get the same answer either way, which I always think that's kind of cool how math works like that. So let's say, okay, our second point, I'm gonna use the Y from the second point minus the Y from the first point. And then I'm gonna take the X from the second point minus the X from the first point. 10 minus seven is three, negative three minus five is negative eight. So negative three eighths is my slope. All right, let's try it again, but the other way around. Let's say if I was given this as my second point and this as my first point. Okay, so our second Y is seven minus our first point, which is 10, our first y, our y from our first point, I should say, which is 10, and then five is the y from our second point, minus a negative three. Very important that we remember minus a negative, have both of those negatives there, which is our x from the first point. Seven minus 10 is negative three, five minus a negative, three is eight. Again, negative three eighths is my slope. It does not matter if the negative, if I write it, if I write it like this, if I write it like that, or if I write it like that, all three of those are the same quantity. They are the same, same thing. So we got the same answer for both of them. It doesn't matter. Either way, it works. So again, all we're doing is the same thing. We're finding that rise over run, which is how much is the Y changing over how much is the X changing. This works for any points that you want to plug in. And again, um, unless like you have a teacher or a professor that's specifically telling you this is point one, this is point two, and wants you to plug those in just like this, y from the second minus y from the first over x from the second minus x from the first. Um, if you're just doing it on your own to find the slope, it doesn't matter. You will get the same answer. It's okay, so don't worry about that. Okay, so that is um, using change in y over change in x to find the slope of a line. If you enjoyed this video, would like to see more videos for all of your math related needs, please visit my channel of The Math Lady or any of my playlists. I've got algebra, geometry, and um, you know math concepts for all of those. Thank you for watching. Please be sure to like and subscribe. Appreciate it so much. Thanks for stopping by. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye.